Hello and welcome to another episode of Unearth Horticulture. If you've been watching the last couple episodes, you know that we have been uh, going through plant morphology or the study of the physical characteristics of plants. I've already done leaves and, and flowers, so if you miss those two episodes and you find this interesting, definitely go back and check them out. I have the links in the description below. But today we are going to tackle the subject of roots. And roots are actually really fascinating and uh, they're basically defined as the part of the plant that doesn't have uh, nodes or leaves growing from it. And also they're generally thought of to be underground. They're also the active uh, location where plants take up water. Most plants that is. There are always exceptions to the rule and you know me, I love looking at those exceptions. So I have a couple today to show you. But in general, roots are the place where moisture is imbibed into the plant. So the first part of the definition, uh, the roots, they don't have nodes or leaves. What is a node? First of all, that is the active growing point on the stem of a plant. So they, uh, roots, leaves, flowers, and other stems can actually come from a node on a plant, but roots do not have nodes. So that means that leaves and flowers will not grow from your plant's roots. That would be a freak of nature, truly. <laughs> All right, so the second part of the definition, they're generally thought of as growing under, underground. That is true, except for some plants are friend, friendly uh, air plants and epiphytes, uh, and sometimes even parasitic plants. They actually don't have roots. They have root-like structures that uh, tap into their host and take all the nutrients and moisture from their hosts. So that's a cool, freaky adaptation. But yes, uh, roots are generally thought of as underground. And I have an example for you here. This is a Florida green philodendron. And you've seen this on my leaf video that I did a couple weeks ago. I really love this plant. I think it's a really unique form. I wanted to show you what a nice, healthy, young root mass looks like. So this hasn't really filled in its container and it's not even up to maybe 25% of the soil area. So it is staying in this size. I'm not transplanting it yet, but you can see this plant has some nice light colored roots and you can even see here, there's some active uh, root tips. I'll try to show you that up close here. Uh, so most roots are, uh, they, the most roots have root hairs which are little filamentous uh, parts of the root that help to take in that moisture uh, from the soil. And there's a lot of water physics that goes on with that process. And it's really fascinating. It's way too nerdy for an unearth horticulture episode though. So if you're interested in that, reach out and I can have a deeper conversation with you. But uh, roots have those root hairs to help take up moisture into the center of the root, into the xylem, and then that is translocated into all areas of the plant. And also in, in the water, there are dissolved minerals. The, the fertilizer that you apply to your plants are dissolved in the water that is taken in through the roots. Really cool. Uh, but they also have root tips, the active growing tip of the root. And that's what senses where the moisture is, where warmth is, the temperature, and uh, sometimes even light. Little known fact, roots can actually photosynthesize if they're exposed to light. However, like I said, most roots grow underground, so that's not really uh, what roots are there for. They're not there to produce chlorophyll. They're there to uh, take in water and mineral nutrients and to stabilize the plant. So that was my Florida green root system. That's a good example of what we generally think of as what, what roots are, what they look like. Now we're going to dive into some adaptations, some exceptions to the rule, and I'm going to show you some really cool examples of roots. We are first going to talk about the exception to the rule, um, and that is the trusty epiphyte. And epiphyte means um, plants that grow upon. Uh, that's literal, the literal translation, but it refers to the fact that epiphytes usually grow upon tree branches or out of the soil. And this is a little mini moth orchid, Phalaenopsis. You know that I love these, and I worked uh, worked with these for, for several years. And uh, I think they're so cool. Their roots are very different from, 
from what we think of as plant roots. You can see up close here, these are really thick and almost stem-like. So a lot of people confuse these epiphytic roots for stems when in, when in actuality they don't have any nodes on them at all. Uh, orchids in particular, um, most epiphytes, have kind of this three-layer root system. They've got the outer skin, the velamen is what it's called. It's the silvery part on the outside of the, the orchid root. The velamen, there's there really needs to be more research done on orchid roots. I found that out when I was doing my own research uh, at K-State. There needs to be more research on orchid roots because they're so cool. Um, but the velamen has many functions, but there, there may be more. It's just not been researched. Uh, one is that it helps adhere the epiphyte, the plant, to a surface. So you can see that there's bark sticking in this in this root zone. I didn't want to rip them off and, and damage the root, but that that velamen is actually helping the the root stick to that bark so that's really cool the velamen also acts like a sponge and it can be what we would call charged with water so it literally when you uh mist it soak it or expose those to water the the water literally soaks into the velamen like a sponge where it sits there until it's taken up by by the root uh, velamen is actually not living tissue. It is dead parts of the plant. It was produced by the plant, but it's it's not living. So uh, velamen is really interesting. Those are its two main two main features, which makes sense because in any plant, the roots are what's there to stabilize the plant. So sticking to trees in this case, and uh, there to take up water to imbibe water. So it's following that definition really well. Um, the epiphyte is. So uh, like normal roots, these have active root tips. I actually don't see any active root tips on this one, probably because it's been out of its uh, pot for a couple of days. I had an accident with it. Yes, we all have those plant accidents. Anyways, so this epiphyte, it's able to take in water from, from the air, from rain that is falling on it. So that's why they're really susceptible to root rot because they don't like growing in soil. So uh, epiphytic roots are an interesting adaptation and there's actually more epiphytes in the houseplant world than you might think. So let's move on and talk about some others. One is back in the corner here. This is my Monstera. It's actually struggling with some black thrips right now. Uh, it struggles on and off with them, but I'm trying to quarantine it a little bit uh, on, my, on my washer here. Eventually I'll need to use my washer, so it's gotta move, but for right now, it's in a happy spot. Um, so I, uh, this Monstera, it needs repotting so bad. As you can see here, it's got several roots. Yes, these are roots coming from the stem of the plant. Monsteras are really known for throwing off these uh, epiphytic roots. Monsteras in nature, they, they're they kind of hemi-epiphytic. They can grow in the soil under tree canopies, but then they also tend to work their way up the sides of tree trunks. So they're technically kind of a hemi-epiphyte, I guess you would call it. Someone might argue with me about that, that terminology, I don't know. But uh, there's some really active air roots on this plant because it's clearly run out of room to expand in its its container. So I've got to find a container that is big enough to help me wrap those roots into there so they're not um, there for my cat to play with. <laughs> anyway, so epiphytes, there's a lot of them. So technically this Florida green here is a little bit epiphytic. You can see here it's got some roots coming from the leaf, the leaf nodes. So like I said, nodes can actually, you can have leaves, you can have flowers, you can even have roots that form from nodes. And what's cool is that makes these plants really easy to propagate because when you take a, a leaf cutting or a leaf stem cutting with those root initials in them, the root initial is just another a fancy way of saying uh, the start of a root, a place where there's a, a little root starting to grow. Uh, if you take those and put them in, in moist soil, you can really easily propagate. I think I have another example doing that. Yes, I have some examples here. All right, so right here, I'll show you this, set this down here. All right, this is a Cebu Blue uh, 
Pothos propagation. Uh, I've been working on it uh, for a few weeks now. They're taking a little bit of time to root. I suppose I don't have the right, quite the right atmosphere for them, but it's not unusual to see some of the cuttings that you stick die. So it's really important when you propagate in this way, which is the industry standard, to stick a lot of cuttings in one pot so that uh, they take. But the trick is when you take the cutting is to get one of those root initials uh, present. And I'll show you it up close. And this one actually looks like it's got an active root tip. So it's actually starting to root away in this in this moist soil. So I'm gonna put that back in there and hopefully it gets going. I can see it's not as much wilted anymore. Now the plant's starting, the leaves are starting to perk up and I'm starting to see some new shoot growth, which means that those roots are starting to take up moisture and, and the plant's starting to be self-sufficient. Really cool. I have another propagation here where I, there was no root initials. This is a Hoya compacta. And if you know anything about Hoyas, you know when the leaves start to get wrinkly like a raisin, it's time to water. But they usually do a really good job of retaining water. Well, this Hoya is actually forming roots along its stem and I'm gonna pop it out if I can yet. Oh, do I want to? <laughs> Here, I'm not gonna pull it out all the way, but you can see in here that there's a little white fuzzy root that is forming. There's actually several. And that's cool because roots are able to form from stems. So that's how taking cuttings works. Plants are cool because they can they can reproduce their entire, uh, the entire plant can reproduce from one cell. That's how tissue culture tends to work. Uh, regeneration it's a it's a cool thing and it's overlooked in plants a lot all right so these roots are all kind of what I would call adventitious roots and this is my next term in this video adventitious literally means plants uh, or uh, adventitious roots in general are roots that form to the advantage of the plant that is the best way to define it um, and usually they're there they form to stabilize the plant like with stalks of corn they form at the base so that the stalk of corn doesn't blow over. Uh, and they form in epiphytes sometimes when they want to climb up trees. Uh, and in this oyster uh, chrysula right here, I show you here, my little pelican, uh, there are some roots forming at the base of the leaves. And those uh, are there, they form often in succulents when the leaves are getting ready to drop off or the, the plant's tipping over and it's just gonna propagate itself that way. So uh, that happens a lot in plants that regenerate by, uh, or reproduce by asexual propagation or rather than by seed so much. They're not adapted as well to, to reproduce by seed. Another cool adaptation of roots is something that occurs in Chlorophytum camosum or spider plant, also known as airplane plant. Uh, this is a bonny or a curly spider plant and they actually have what's called tuberoids and uh, those actually form, they're kind of like tubers but they're smaller than tubers. Um, a tuber, to give you an example, is a sweet potato. Sweet potato is a modified root that holds uh, starchy uh, stores for the the leafy part of the sweet potato plant, but we actually like to eat the sweet potato. So a tuber is usually larger and a large part of the root mass. But tuberoids actually are smaller and they occur uh, in plants sometimes naturally just to, to be little miniature tubers. Um, so we're gonna take a look, I'm gonna take this apart uh, and, and show you uh, what those look like. Hopefully, this is kind of a young plant, so hopefully they're there. So I might have to do some digging. As you can see, I've got a ton of roots build up and they really exactly align with the pot size. Now, I don't really wanna increase pot size. I'm probably gonna put this back in that pot because uh, we're going into winter and shorter days. Now, this thing grows fast enough that You know, I might repot it. <laughs> Scratch that, never mind. So I'm just gonna look really quick. I, I did spot a little thickened part of the root. It's not quite 
bulbous, like some of the, the tuberoids that I've seen in spider plants, and I've been re replanting them, but they're, they're really cool. They get these really succulent, succulent roots. So just like succulents, I guess that reminds me, just like succulents uh, that store water in their leaves and stems, plants with tubers or tuberoids are st storing more water in their root zone, which I think is a little bit more uh, smart, a little bit more intuitive, I would feel like, because uh, because uh, it's underground and it's a little bit more protected from the elements. But, you know, sometimes plants with tubers or tuberoids have issues with root decay because they're holding all those extra starches down there and uh, things like microorganisms like fungi and bacteria like to uh, munch on those too. So I suppose every plant has its adaptation. So there you have it. Uh, some really cool tuberoids. I hope you enjoyed this episode talking about all things roots. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out and check out the other videos in this mini series. And until next week, you've been watching Unearth Horticulture.